same as me. And uh, we can see the players are going into Armageddon. And uh, you've said you've, you're a big fan of Magnus Carlsen and, of course, Hikaru Nakamura. And I'd like to thank you so much, Marcus, for coming into the studio and for your time. Thank you. Wow, and uh, Magnus has brought us really good luck here in the studio because it's the King's Gambit. Wow, a romantic opening. You nearly never see this in the 21st century. And Judith, your eyes have lit up. <laughs> Absolutely, because this was my opening when I was a baby. I was starting out with this opening with 2F4, sacrificing the uh, king pawn there. Uh, and I was playing with bishop c4, not with this very aggressive from the 18th century, we can say. <laughs> Knight of seven. No, not yet. Ah, uh, you want to give up pieces, <laughs> lure that black king out into the open. But uh, this is a older variation, as you mentioned, and yeah, it has a decent reputation, a solid reputation for black. I'm surprised Magnus has given back the pawn. No more king's gambit. Uh, it is level material, and Hikaru looking away to the left there. That signifies he's trying to remember something. Uh, he normally has that face on when he's recalling opening theory. I've had this position myself against the likes of Nigel Short. And, uh, okay, what will Hikaru play? I'm surprised he's gone in for this because Magnus had that World Championship match against Jan Nepomnichi in 2021, who had just released a chess, uh, chessable course on the King's Gambit. So Magnus will have studied this Ooh. in recent times. But uh, novelty incoming. I mean, Hikaru's little pawn move, never been played before. Okay. It doesn't look like the most impressive move, I've got to say, Judith. No, no now, fucking chances for white. Now there's kind of some transposition and two games in the database. What do you think? It looks very good for black because black is much more developed right now. Look at white's pieces. It's none of them developed yet. And uh, But it's it's really cool that we have a king's gambit in, in an Armageddon. I played it last time, you know, in 2010 or something. At some point I was playing a rapid event in Mexico. And I played against Topalov and I won. Very convincingly, I couldn't believe it myself. <laughs> it's like a nice exchange sacrifice or something on that. Was it or some kind of sacrifice on F4 in that game? Maybe I remember watching it and thinking, "Wow, this is uh, how chess should be played." Yeah, that was shocking. That uh, I don't even know why I came up with that idea to play King's Gambit, but but here really, White is in trouble from development point of view, right? I mean, Knight is going to jump to E5 or D4 in a second, and you can't stop both. Yeah, you can't stop both. Once the knight arrives on e5 or d4, maybe the bishop will come out. Black will be very quick to castle queenside. It doesn't look like uh, the king's gambit has worked out. This time it has backfired. This is unfortunately why it doesn't make an appearance more often at the top level. Well, king's gambit is something that is great if you your opponent frightens from you, you know? Guts afraid. But Magnus is not that type of guy. He's going to be smiling on your f4, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's normally the one who puts in all the hard work to surprise the opponent, Magnus, and he's got uh, given a position that he probably knows very well. A very quick play from him so far. But we have seen two successful games in the Armageddon where the players have just played some wild position and they've sacrificed material and they're saying, you know, Black simply doesn't have enough time to handle all those complications, even though, let's face it, it probably is a great position for black. So uh, the games that I'm thinking of is like Shakira against Ariane. He just gave a pawn, had some initiative. Yes, but that's and, a different story. And yesterday, let's not forget that uh, escape trick that uh, Magnus pulled on her Wesley when he sacrificed the whole rook. Yeah, but those were already middle game stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And from Mamedyarov, he just wanted to go into full complications. The problem is for White here that he just has no time to develop properly because you, I mean, what can you do? I mean, it's, it's at first sight, it's really miserable. So knight c3, let's say, or okay, he went queen f2, kind of prophylactical move. Black, I think, will go knight e5, trying to jump to g4. But another idea is just to develop with the c8 bishop and even castle long. So the, the only problem for black is that there are so many tempting options. I think g3 is something that maybe uh, the plan can be for black, for white. That's why Magnus played rook g8. Yeah, 
Yeah. This Rook G8 is a different Rook G8 than <laughs> Abdus Antarum made yesterday <laughs> versus Starry. <laughs> this one we can understand, Rook on an open file. But yeah. uh, yesterday a bit more mysterious. And uh, okay, Hikaru threatening to jump into the center with the White Knight. This was cut out by Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Bishop E6, really nice move. And both sides need to rush to castle. It feels like uh, surely Bishop D2 is going to happen and White's King needs to run to safety before it's too late. Uh, I want to give credit to Hikaru, though. Just, uh, I'm so glad he promised entertainment. Maybe this is why in the interview he was smiling. He knew what he was going to do in the Armageddon. He knew that he had a surprise up his sleeve. It might have backfired so far, but still early days. Yeah, maybe I'm not fair that uh, that I, I said so many bad things about White's position. <laughs> maybe it's not as bad as, is, as it looked two moves ago. I just um, don't see how you can be better. That's the problem, and you're in a must-win situation. But... I think Hikaru is just being practical. He's saying, you know, I don't care about being better because the tussles will be happening in the later stages of the game. And if Hikaru is a bit more familiar with those positions, then, you know, he can handle them with great resourcefulness. I like the queen on f2, actually, because it, 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 it ties down the c6 knight and attacks the a7 pawn. So at some point, knight d5 can be good or even knight b5. The other idea is to go bishop e2 and then rook f1 and attack the f4 pawn. So black should know what he's doing. <laughs> oh, and look at Magnus's last move. Trademark Magnus. Going to go into an endgame. Yeah, and uh, not just wanting the queens off for safety, but I think it's uh, directly correlated to Judith's point. The white queen was actually white's best piece potentially on f2. And uh, white had some counterattacking ideas there. So bullying the white queen back if it wasn't a must-win situation maybe Hikaru would have allowed that trade instead he's been forced to retreat and suddenly the white piece is back it's Fisher Random but we know he's a Fisher Random world champion Hikaru loads of the white pieces now on the back rank what can black do to up the pressure to maintain the momentum if white does get two or three moves he should be okay watch out for 92 as well hitting the black queen hitting the pawn on f4 and okay preemptively again prophylaxis uh, just dropping back with the black queen Mm -hmm. maybe getting ready to plant the knight on the dominant d4 square. Yeah, you kind of feel that white's best move is actually to put the queen back on f2, but of course Hikaru is in a must-win situation, cannot do that. And the thing that is concerning about white's position is how on earth is he going to develop the light squared bishop and the rook? Well, this is the reason I like the queen d4 very much, what Magnus played in the previous move, because it's not only that he pushed away the very well-placed f2 queen because it was an attacker, but also it defended the g2 pawn. So right now bishop e2 is not exactly possible because the pawn is hanging on g2. Okay, and a move from Hikaru. He does retreat, knight e2. And that move is given a question mark by the all-seeing engine. What could, uh, why could that be a mistake? It feels like you can get greedy and grab one right, or two. Pawn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hello. <laughs> wow. That's Fisher-esque taking on uh, H2 in that World Championship match. Fis ah. Fisher, he doesn't go for it, Magnus. More practical decision, just playing F5. And okay, the cross there means maybe a miss, a missed opportunity for Magnus. Was that just t capturing this pawn? It took courage. Instead, a safer decision from the former World Champion. And G3 Hikaru fighting back now, utilizing this pin. The F4 pawn cannot be touched. You cannot take on G3. Maybe you can, but uh, either way, you have to calculate well here. Yeah, and it, it does feel that Magnus is losing a little of the control he had, with this, especially with this last move by Hikaru. G3, great move. And we should mention the clock time. Three and a half minutes now for Magnus. Four, and a, four minutes uh, 50 almost for Hikaru Nakamura. I've seen these two face off in title Tuesday multiple times where there's a one second increment. Magnus has lost on time countless times in their encounters. He always seems to flag against Hikaru. So he's going to get nervous if the clocks tick down. Meanwhile, F takes E4, Judith. Which one is uh, Hikaru going to recapture? I think G3 was something that Magnus was not expecting. And uh, this is why... I also thought after knight d2 is little attack on the f4 pawn. I want to go bishop c3, but actually g3 was the idea. Gf is very logical. I think black. I don't know bishop h3. Bishop h3, right? Yeah, feels strange to allow this move with tempo, lining up against the black king on the diagonal, hitting the black queen. Maybe he's just going to drop back. Maybe he'll just move his queen away and say, trade off bishops, please. Uh, bishop h3. Maybe he'll just retreat and 
But there is another question. What about knight g3? I know. And I was thinking you could back that up with moves like f5. But okay, that requires a lot of calculation. Yeah, there's multiple ways to hit this black queen. And Magnus better have some answers up his sleeve. But Hikaru has slowed down. It's really tense. It feels like the critical moments could be around now. Exactly. I also wanted just to point out that he spends this few seconds or maybe even a little more knight g3 or bishop h3. Knight g3 this played. Mm -hmm. On the board. The black queen has to move. The question is where does she centralize? Oh, question mark attached to that move as well. Maybe a mistake giving black an opportunity. Maybe I'm black can grab on g3 or what can be the problem? Ooh, I'm thinking about going for the a2 pawn that you've both been mentioning uh, a few times. Okay, the black queen just steps back. Well, going for the a2 pawn. Yeah, I wanted to go for it with the black queen. <laughs> and it's important now that queen e4 is not possible because bishop d5 would win the exchange. And both players under three minutes. Well, Hikaru just over. And uh, we see a trade of bishops. F5, look at that. Well, tactics galore. Yeah, black Don't cannot take. It's not F5 and bishop h3. But maybe it's about time to take on a2. No. no. He wants to take with the queen. Big threat on the board. Queen takes a2 might be devastating. End in a checkmating attack. But you can simply play some safety chess and move the king to protect that pawn. And he does do that. And now Magnus centralizing the knight. And, and again, it just feels like any anyone's game, although big threat on the board of knight coming into f3. And oh, 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 we, we see the same pattern keep repeating time and time again. You know, now the white queen attacks the pawn on a7. Yeah, two can play at that game. He attacks the pawn and Magnus ignores it completely. Wow, nerves of steel. He's arguing that queen takes pawn is not as dangerous as it looks because uh, later on the black bishop will move and vacate a square for the black king on d7. Wow, okay. Hikaru, it feels like he needs to gamble. It's a bit like Magnus's game yesterday in the Armageddon against Wesley. Queen takes a7 happened there too, and it worked yeah. out well for white. But somehow this is not that position. <laughs> when Magnus's queen was on a7, things uh, started to become much uh, better than before. And here the, the white square bishop will be incredibly strong of Magnus. And now we can see that the pieces, the pawns are not really good of white. There are a lot of weaknesses. Mm. Yeah, Black's king is safe. It's got extra protection around it, extra shelter compared to the white king. And like you say, Judith. This is not something that uh, you get away against, Magnus. <laughs> yeah, not in classical, at least. But this is Armageddon. Two minutes now for white. Hikaru is down on the clock. Not good news for uh, the American fans there. What to play? It's hard. There's tactics all over the place. You're well, threatening to take this pawn, undermine the white knight on e4. Also, knight c4 is a threat. Both. I mean, isn't it time to mobilize the rook? And he does do that. And maybe there are some ideas of rook takes bishop in the air. Uh, I, I can see the evaluation bar hating white's position. But still, when the players have uh, less than two and a half minutes on the clock, it's going to get tense. Wow, and we did see that uh, there was a missed opportunity for Magnus. We saw the red cross appear with his last move, but he plays a very safe one. Can't blame him for that. There are going to be tactical opportunities later. He's up on time with a great position, as said there in the feature chat, Magnus Carlsen right now. Kara needs some magic. He's allowed Bishop takes pawn. He's done it willingly. Maybe that was uh, the lesser of the evils there. A smash and grab, that, uh, that white pawn on A2 has disappeared, but white has gained some time in return. Going on the attack now, counter-attack. Hitting the black queen. Oh, Magnus is zooming in for the kill, Judith. Uh, he's not joking here. <laughs> <laughs> no, big threat on the board of queen a5 check. And something is going to happen on a2. Something's going to happen. The queen and bishop combo there for black looking really menacing. You need to block somehow with the white queen, with the white rooks. But it feels like it's hanging by a thread. Under one minute now for Hikaru. Maybe he'll play some b4 or something just to protect this a2 square, but... Mm. It's kind of hopeless. Yeah, Magnus with a better position and also more time on the clock. And the players are on move 31, which means that still some moves left before they get that one second increment. And uh, we see a set of rooks leave the board. Yeah, Magnus is a pawn up and with an yeah. ongoing initiative. So that trade seems to help black. Queen a4 seems to be quite important. Quite a strong move, Queen H2 and Queen H4, so kind of a double attack. Oof, yeah, that um, looks like a killer. No, but uh, Magnus decides to weave a mating net, 
bishop comes down to b3. Big threat of queen a4 on the board. Almost unstoppable threat. Unstoppable if you have 30 seconds at least. How does white get his pieces in? The white knight, the white bishop, they're just offside, unable to come back to the rescue of their king. As uh, said in the feature chat there, Hikaru does need a miracle. With 30 seconds left, queen a4. Oof. Rook goes away. Still some... The fighting spirit is there. Yes. Yeah, but uh, Hikaru, 23 seconds. And uh, check. Uh-oh. The white rook is going to drop. The white rook is undefended. Magnus wins it. But his knight falls. Hikaru's still fighting. Still in the game for now, at least. I'm not even sure that Nakamura did not give it on purpose with bishop g4. Yeah, I think he had to. He had to give something up. But Magnus playing for tricks now. Bishop takes pawn. Really nasty. If the bishop was captured there, black had queen f4 check, picking up one of white's pieces. And now everything's coming through. Surely, Judith, this is going to be checkmate. It, if it's not going to be checkmate, I think Hika uh, Magnus will be winning Hikaru's queen at the or end of it. on time. Yep. <laughs> and uh, we see a handshake. Magnus takes the Armageddon victory with the black pieces.